These are the two um, main elements of the fire system other than the piping itself. This is a Watts lead free fitting. It's uh, basically brass, I believe. Um, but with the lead free fittings, they've taken out as much of the lead as they can, and which is important when you hook this up, especially if it's connected to a domestic water supply system, because you obviously don't want any lead contamination in your water supply. Um, this is going to go downstream of my water supply, um, domestic water supply. And this fitting is 3 quarter inch for PEX. The PEX tubing goes into here. And um, I like working with PEX because it's relatively easy and I've used it for home heating systems in the past. And this bracket gets attached to the stud. And this fitting is a 1 half inch. This is 3 quarter. This is 1 half inch. And this is where the fire sprinkler head itself gets attached. You can use uh, pipe dope with it or Teflon tape. I'll probably wind up using Teflon tape. And it gets attached facing down like this. And it gets attached to the stud. Now, this fire sprinkler head is a Viking 474. And it, uh, it is a concealed extinguisher, which means when you install it, it's going to be flush. The bottom of it is going to be flush with the the ceiling so that the only thing you see is a little plate covering it up and when you install it you have to leave approximately two and I think it's five sixteenths inches from the bottom of the stud so that you have enough clearance to install this where it won't be poking through the the ceiling uh, this Viking is a 474 uh, I think the part number has a C at the end of it because it's the C has a rating of 165 degrees. Uh, I think B is 155 degrees and so on, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, this plastic cover is just a protection for the sprinkler head itself. It's going to be removed when you finally do the installation. And you need a special wrench to get into the inside of the sprinkler head and be able to twist it, turn it, so that it's a tight fitting, a watertight fitting onto the the watts fitting here. So when you install it, not only do you need to leave enough room, you should be careful about damaging any of the parts that are uh, in this inside here because it's basically a bulb that bursts at 165 degrees and the water gets deflected down onto this deflector and it spreads throughout the room. So this is a 474 Viking. This is a watts fitting, like I say, three quarter inch here from the PEX. This face is down, this is a half inch, typical half inch nipple, and the fire uh, sprinkler itself gets attached and is facing down here. Now, make sure that you use the proper fittings, use the proper PEX. I'm going to be using uh, an RF PEX, that's a Watts, uh, Watts brand that's for residential fire uh, systems so I'll show you that in a later video and um, that's about it as far as the individual pieces go these are some of the parts required for a residential fire system these are the sprinkler heads made by Viking as I mentioned 474 is the model number with a red protective cap on it. You don't take these off until it's installed. These I got on eBay. Someone was selling um, an extra 17 or so for 50, 40 bucks, whatever it was, and I ordered it. So the average is out to, you know, six, seven dollars a piece, which is quite a lot cheaper than what you normally would pay, which is maybe 40, 50 bucks for these. The other item that you need are the fittings, and these are from Watts, and I got a bunch of T's and left side fittings and right side fittings, depending on what direction you want to go. And this is where the, the actual sprinkler head attaches to, and this is the attachment for the, the Watts PEX pipe. These were about, these are more expensive, these are about uh, 20, 30 bucks a piece. Uh, somewhere in that range, but you just need one for each for each sprinkler head. This is the PEX pipe I talked about earlier. This is called Watts 
RF PEX. It has a distinctive red stripe on it. This is a 250 foot coil. I guess the RF stands for residential fire systems. Uh, the cost is about 180 bucks. It'll range from 180, 200, 220, something like that. But this is a 250 foot coil of three quarter inch. Well, I'm working with the uh, 250 foot coil of three quarter inch PEX. And I'm showing you this for people who haven't worked with PEX before. It can be a little unwieldy, especially trying to straighten it out. It's a little like wrestling with an alligator. But just stick with it. Eventually it'll straighten out and you'll be able to work with it. But getting it out of its coil shape takes some time, especially if the temperature outside like it is today in the cool 50s. So if you've never worked with PEX before, you will find that getting it straightened out is a little difficult, but all it takes is time. Now the instructions for installing the, the uh, fixture for holding the sprinkler head uh, says that you need to have the, the fixture installed on the stud a certain height because the 474 Viking is concealed under the uh, ceiling itself. So I made a little template. Viking the 474 Viking recommends a distance from the drywall to the fixture of a minimum of 2 and 1 16th inch to a maximum of 2 and 9 16 I believe. So I went in the middle and the middle is 2 and uh, 5 16 So I measured two and five sixteenths for a little template here to ensure my fixture was high enough. But I also had to make an allowance for the five eighths of an inch of drywall that's going to be going on the ceiling. That uh, brought me down from 35 sixteenths down to 25 sixteenths because it's going to be five eighths drywall which is 10 sixteenths. So I'm working with 25 sixteenths for this template but then you also have to take into consideration the base, how far from the edge of the, the fixture that the base is, and in addition the amount of space that will be consumed when you screw the Viking sprinkler head into the fixture itself. So I came up with a template of 29 sixteenths for installing my fixture head. I mean my fixture for putting the, uh, installing the fire sprinkler head into this fixture. So that'll be installed 29 sixteenths above the bottom of the joist I'm allowing for the 5 eighths drywall. So when the sprinkler head is finally installed, uh, after you remove the red protective cap, the fire sprinkler head itself should be totally concealed by the ceiling. Now this uh, deflector that comes down when the fire sprinkler is activated is not an issue right now because this will be in an upper position when you put the cover plate on after the ceiling is installed. The reason for my interest in putting in a residential fire protection system is I had a house fire and uh, I had always thought about residential fire extinguishers and um, thinking about it and doing anything about it is not the same thing but when all the studs are free and open for you to run pipe I'm thinking why not do it now before all the plaster goes up and you simply take the PEX piping and straighten it out as much as you can and loop it through the ceiling stud um, voids and uh, 
cut it off where you need it. It's not that terribly difficult. Um, here is a sprinkler head, the one sample that I installed. And you can see the placement on this 2x4. These are actually two, true 2x4s. Two this is an old home and the 2x4s are actually dimensioned 2 inches by 4 inches. So um, don't use this guide on 2x4s nowadays where it's dimensional lumber. Well, I put one of the fire extinguisher assemblies up on a, a joist or a 2x4 for the ceiling and I strung the PEX, RF PEX into another room for another sprinkler head and that goes into this fitting here. Now I didn't put any crimp ring on the PEX because this is just temporary. I do prefer the stainless steel crimps with a little knob on them because the crimper tool you can use is good for multiple sizes like a half inch or three quarter inch so the crimper just crimps the same size knob that sticks up off the, the metal ring. I think it's stainless steel but it's a little metal ring that goes around the end of the PEX but I'm taking the pipe down this is just temporary I'm taking it down because they have to odor seal the the, the 2x4s and I just connect it with some standard plastic snap connectors I think you can see them here and then run it to the other room where I started because I want to be able to cut the PEX pipe to the exact length so I, I go to the second position and come back here line up the PEX pipe and then cut it so I know I got the exact length now I'm going to talk a little bit about crimping the PEX pipe let's say a little plastic cover on here let's say this plastic cover is off and I insert my PEX pipe into the fitting these are the stainless steel rings I was talking about. I'll give you a close-up of it in a second. But they slip over the end of the PEX pipe. The cut on the PEX pipe should be square and it should be all the way on the fitting. And there's a little knob here that the crimper goes over. I'll do a close-up so that you can better see this fitting and the crimper I use. So here's a close-up of the fittings I use. They're uh, cinch clamps by Watts. Hope you can get a good idea what this looks like here. And this is the bag it comes in. There's ten in a bag. And this cinch clamp goes over the end of the pecs like this. Once you have it on the fitting and I know it may seem a little unusual but here's my crimping tool and I put pipes at the end of the handles because quite frankly the handles are too short to get any kind of power or torque on the when you want to cinch the clamp so this clamp has a little notch in the front that closes when you close the clamp and it's open wide enough to accommodate the little knob on the on the cinch clamp itself so that you just put the cinch clamp inside that little void in the in the front of your clamp once it's sitting in there all you do is pull back on the handles as hard as you can and when the handles release you're done with the cinching job. I'm not going to do this one because these little cinch clamps are relatively expensive but that's obviously how you do it and uh, then you check after your cinch clamp is attached 
check with water pressure and see if there's a leak. If there is a leak, you just have to remove the pipe, cut it a half an inch or an inch shorter, and remove it and uh, start over. That's it. Incidentally, I don't own Watts, and I'm not an employee of Watts, but this is another Watts product that I use. Either These are the, uh, the, the clips, snap clips, that go onto the studs to hold the pipe in place. Again, three-quarter inch. But this is what I use to uh, attach the pipe to the studs. Of course, if you need to pass your pecs through some studs, simply get a stain bit. And make your hole a little bit bigger than the size of the pex pipe. Of course, you can use the specialty cutters for cutting your pecs, but I, I tend to use a, a rather large snap-off blade cutter to cut the pecs. It's a little difficult to force it through, but you just got to go slow and steady. And I also use this to trim off um, the end if it's not square. It has to be square. So I just use this for cutting and trimming. I'm going to do a sample crimp now. Now remember, I'm not a professional. But here's the packs, here's the fitting, and here's the crimp right here. And it's got a little nodule on it that needs to be compressed. So I'll take the crimping tool, expand it all the way. I use a piece of tape on the back just to keep the, the crimp in the right position. Compress the jaws all the way. And if they don't release, it's not crimp tight enough. There we go. You can see this little nodule on the end here crimped. Take the tape off. And that should be a good connection, except I'll have to test it with the water test later on. Here's a close-up of the crimp and the fitting. You see how it compresses the little nodule and it tightens the PEX pipe around the fitting. And I'd like to note that uh, this fitting is a T. The left side of the fitting will be used to go into the adjoining room and the bottom part of the T will go to the first floor ceiling and the first floor ceiling fire sprinklers will be attached to that and there'll be another T there to take it down to the basement. 